Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. I am obsessed with my TBR for this video. I feel like both books have a chance to be new all-time favorites. They're also both like female focus, which we love to see. But before I dive into the books themselves, first a word from this video's sponsor, which is Nurex. I'm so excited to say that this video is sponsored by Nurex, a service I've personally been using for years. I am of the mindset that personal healthcare should be easy to access, discreet, affordable, and transparent in their pricing, which is why I love Nurex as a service and an app. If you're not familiar, Nurex is a telehealth service that has an incredible application. And through this app, you're able to connect with a healthcare Care provider to get information and access to things like SDI testing, birth control, acne treatment, migraine treatment, and so much more. How it works, you basically connect with a healthcare provider, provide them your medical history. They're able to help provide you the care you need. The awesome thing about Nurex too is that all of their products are accessible right from your phone and then they're sent directly to your door discreetly with free and fast shipping. They do accept insurance, but they also provide transparent and affordable pricing if you don't have insurance as well, which I think is amazing. Personally, I have been using Nurex to access my birth control. All of my refills are sent to me automatically directly to my door. I never have to be concerned that I'm not going to have my prescription for that month. I also never have to deal with the headache of setting up a doctor appointment or try to schedule around the things I actually want to do, like traveling. In fact, you can actually easily access the care you need no matter where you are. You can talk to someone while you're traveling and living your best life. Care can, of course, also change depending on your evolving needs, and you're always able to consult with a healthcare provider regarding this as well. Essentially, you should be stressing less about getting the healthcare and services you need and worrying more about all the fun vacations you're wanting to take this summer. You're truly changing the healthcare game making services not only more accessible, but more affordable as well, which we love to see. If you guys are interested in learning more about Nurex, I'll have a link down below to their app as well as their site to learn more. Thank you again to Nurex for sponsoring this video and let's jump back into the TBR. So my TBR for this video is first Son of the Shadows by Juliette Marillier, which is book two to the Daughter of the Forest series. I read the first one a few months ago. Fell in love with Juliette Marillier's writing style, her settings, her ambiance, everything about it was just stunning. So I'm excited to start the journey in the next book following our main character's daughter as she goes out on her own quest. Then the other book I want to start is When Women Wore Dragons by Kelly Barnhill, a speculative fiction novel set in the 50s where everything about their world is like ours except for one significant thing and that is a group of women were transformed into dragons overnight. It sounds super interesting. I love this author and I feel like it's going to be one that's really going to make me think. But these are the two books I'm so excited for. Before I actually start reading though, there is something that needs to be done that is very imperative. Oops. And that is make banana bread. Look at these. These are, these are ready for banana bread. So we're gonna get started on that now. And then I'm gonna sit down, get some reading in, watch some reality TV and enjoy the rest of my evening. All that banana goodness. Delectable. And away they go. My banana bread is done and I've also decided to start this book, which I'm actually gonna sit down and read now. Dinner is cooking. There's Matilda. And I have a reading update for you guys. I am also freshly laundered, but let's talk about when women were dragons. So I've only read 30 pages, so I have quite a bit of this book left, but out of the gate, I can confidently already tell you I'm enjoying the writing style and, and structurally how this book is put together. Going into this book, I knew that this story was going to be told from a point of view of a woman who kind of grew up during this very significant event. Particularly, we know going in that her aunt turns into a dragon and her mother is left behind. And so far, we are getting her childhood, at least so far, told from her viewpoint. But intermixed between all of these chapters of like the home life, if you will, we also have various clippings of like researchers trying to make sense of this event and like also trying to draw connections to possible 
past dragoning moments in time. We have snippets of speeches made by politicians speaking out about this as well. And even at the beginning of this book, it says, when women were dragons, being the truthful accounting of the life of Alex Green, physicist, professor, activist, still human, a memoir of sorts. So this story is written like a memoir. Obviously it's fiction, but like structurally the lens that we're consuming this story very much feels like someone telling us the tale of their life. And it's so effective so far. Um, starting off, again, I've only read 30 pages. You get this tableau of a complicated home life. Uh, our main character and narrator is very young and she's basically describing a situation and a complicated relationship between two sisters. One sister is much more independent in the fact that she is a mechanic during a time where women don't really hold any type of job, especially ones traditionally viewed as masculine. Whereas her sister was like a genius, but she ended up becoming a housewife. And they both have like controlling husbands in their own way. And this dynamic and this frustration that they have for each other, but also the love they have for each other is like told in these small moments expressed by our narrator. And so far, I have not gotten to the Great Dragoning of 1955, which is again an event where hundreds of thousands of women in America turn into dragons, but we are slowly working our way up there. And I think just like, this book is gonna be so good. Like I just love intermix between these deeply personal chapters that feel so well. We have these like news clippings and speeches and things. It's just so effective and I'm already hooked and I've only read 30 pages, which is just such a great sign. So I'm gonna be reading more of this tonight. I can't wait to read more of this tonight. And I'm happy to report I'm already really liking it. And dinner is served. I always stuff my chicken thighs often with some goat cheese. I seasoned it with salt, pepper, garlic, and cayenne. Roasted some corn, steamed some broccoli, and then Clay's has no goat cheese, but has Creole seasoning instead. Good morning, everyone. It's time to get some reading in. And also I have a bunch of banana muffins to consume for the mornings, which is very exciting. Muffin is acquired, second cup of coffee, and I am attempting a very intense reading sprint this morning. I want to, I've already read 50 pages and I wanna read 50 pages more. I'm really loving this book and I'm excited to talk about it. But first, I wanna get more reading in. Friends, so I have been having a nice and productive morning so far, particularly I've been doing a good amount of reading and I can honestly say I'm about halfway through When Women Were Dragons and I'm really liking this book. Um, it's just such a unique concept and how it's playing out, I just feel like it's saying a lot of things and I really appreciate the writing style and the structure of the book. So again, this is kind of an alternate history story and the alternate history aspect of this is that women can turn into dragons. Going into this book, I thought this event was contained to the 1955 mass dragoning, but as you learn through like interspersed pieces of history and like records, women have been turning into dragons for centuries upon centuries. It's just they often are more isolated events and written over, kind of ignored. And there were many attempts to kind of prevent this information from being disseminated across society at large. But the 1955 dragoning was so significant in the pure number of women who transformed, it couldn't be kind of brushed under the rug. But what did occur is that the feminine reality of being turned into a dragon was turned into something that was like, shameful so the discussion of this event also just dragons in general is like deeply looked down upon and it's like viewed as like deviant to bring it up like there's something wrong with you that you want to discuss it again in this story we follow our main character alex and structurally this book is written like a memoir it's like a science oriented memoir as our author is recounting both her life but also through again snippets and her own point of view as like a scientist describing the reality of dragoning and women and we're following alex's life as she essentially recounts many different significant and pivotal moments of her life that inevitably shape her and her decisions later in her life and i'm pretty sure this book is going to expand through a large swath of time but i've only read about the first 50 percent first part of this book opens up on alex's childhood and her initial experiences and interactions with 
dragoning itself. She first comes across this when she witnesses an elderly neighbor turn into a dragon and she's quickly hushed by her mother to not bring it up, but it becomes slightly unavoidable when her aunt, who she loves dearly, proud and talented and bold and has always protected and cared for her mother as well, decides to turn into a dragon herself. This creates a very complicated scenario in Alex's household because on the one hand, she loves her aunt and in some ways can understand perhaps in her own childlike view, like why this would happen. But she also feels this sense of abandonment. Clearly her mother also feels left behind and this distrust and this dislike around the concept and the discussion around dragons continues to not be something that can be talked about in the household. Obviously this transformation of being a dragon is a very physical manifestation of a metaphor. Um, this is set in the 50s, but historically speaking, the transformation of a dragon is connected to female rage and the suppression of female like feelings and how they throughout history have been made to be smaller to fit in a world of men. You see this play out not only in terms of sexuality and queerness, but just the desire to pursue their own passions and how time and time again, they're forced to fit in a very different box. And this rage manifests itself in this transformation. Um, which is also why it's viewed at with such shame. Because at the very least, women should not be so hysterical, if you will. So far, the book is just really fascinating. Seeing this concept come to life so far is just very successful. It can at times feel a little bit on the nose, but overall, I really like what the author is saying and what she's exploring. More so, I'm really just enjoying following our main character, Alex's life, her triumphs, her heartbreaks, her relationship with her cousin turned sister turned daughter, just the all of the different scenarios where you can see the callbacks to the women that raised her and the women before her, seeing where these different types of responses come from. Also just the dynamic nature between a lot of the different women in this book, because you can love them, but you also feel abandoned by them or you wanna follow in their footsteps, but what happens to the people you leave behind? It's all very complicated and it's captured well with the writing style of the author and just how the story itself is playing out. Um, again, I have about 50% of this book left. I'm pretty sure I'm going to continue to follow the rest of Alex's life and her career and her choices in general. Um, but yeah, I personally am just really loving the format of this written as a memoir, even though it's fiction, and then also continuing to include these different pieces of scientific research and interviews. It's just successfully put together. And so far I'm very engaged in this book and I'm looking forward to see where it takes us next. Little Mediterranean salad for lunch. Yum. Hi, so my work day is over. I feel like I did a pretty awful job vlogging. Um, truth be told, I feel like I made today like more chaotic than it needed to be. So I'm trying to be mindful with the rest of my time this evening to make sure I'm doing a bunch of things that I like that bring me joy and I can stop like fixating and mostly get off my dang phone. So let's talk about what we want to accomplish. First off, I am really craving a cheeseburger. So I'm going to make some cheeseburgers tonight, have corn like last night as well. And I think some broccoli or something along those lines. I just really want a cheeseburger. <laughs> so we're going to make that. Two, I'm going to watch some more 90 Day Fiance because it's aces. It's so entertaining and fun and I'm just really enjoying it. And three, I wanna read more of When Women Were Dragons. I've already read 150 pages of this book. So it'd be awesome I could, if I could get like another 100 pages read today and then finish it up tomorrow and start my next book for this vlog. But we're gonna get on track. We're gonna get focused. It's all gonna be great. And uh, that's the plan. So. Let's have a good evening. It is summertime grubbing. And of course, of course you have to have the lettuce, tomato, onion, condiment options, pickles. It's a burger night. I wish I had a grill, but I don't. And I can burger in my own kitchen. Matilda and I are vibing, watching Ranking of Kings. So good. All right, I moved it to the bedroom to continue anime watching, but also look at my cute new quilt. I'm obsessed. My mom got it for me for my birthday and it's stunning. I feel like I'm gonna have this 
forever. And of course, I also have my book, which I'm also about to start reading. Matilda is exploring behind the curtains, a mystery. Anime watching is over and we are now reading. This book makes me so furious, but like it's trying to, so it's being very successful at making me literally so furious. Lots of anger, lots of, lots of anger. I would probably turn into a dragon. Hi friends, good morning. Did some very successful reading last night and I'm gonna continue reading. I don't know what I have gotten all over this book. This is why you shouldn't eat and read, but I am going to get more reading done this morning, finish my cup of coffee, take work and then circle back. And my goal is to finish this today and start book two. I'm really liking it. And I'm looking forward to see honestly, like where it's going because I feel like you can really go in a lot of different directions. Hi friends, I owe you many things. One of those is a reading update, but I'm gonna try to sneak in some filming ahead of lunch, but we had a very exciting delivery today. Actually, we've had a few like new additions to the home. So I wanted to give you a bit of an update. So let's show it off. So the primary update has to do with the dining room. So we got a new chandelier installed. I love the glass of it and I don't know, the shape and the scalloping. And then today we got our dining room table. After five months of waiting, we can now eat and enjoy this space. So this came together so nicely. We still have like other plans for this room, like some paint. I think we wanna move some furniture around in here and add some more things, but like, the heart and soul of a dining room, which is a chair, table, and a light are in, and it's oh so exciting. Round two on the Mediterranean salad, but today I added couscous. Hello, I'm about to sit down and actually finish this book, When Women Are Dragons, but I definitely owe you guys another update, um, as I haven't updated you since I passed 150, and I'm well into the 200 page mark right now. Um, this book is really good. I just think the concept overall is really effective and what it's trying to say reading this book, honestly, you will feel furious most of the time. Again, I do feel like the metaphor is a little on the nose. The fact of the matter is like, this is also the reality of the time period and all of those things. Honestly, sifting through the misogyny, the internalized misogyny and just different types of shades of feminism that are still simply just not good enough in terms of making sure that everyone is included is just, makes you wanna scream sometimes, especially given the current reality of the world we live in. But this imagery and like the capturing of female rage and how it is transformative, I just think it's such a interesting concept. I also appreciate how dynamic this story is following our main character, Alex, as she has to overcome so much and watching her both be empathetic and understanding as to why people are turning into dragons, but still feeling left behind, you know? Like her mother could have turned into a dragon, but decided to stay. And maybe turning into a dragon would have made her mother better off, but she did decide to stay and raise her and her sister, cousin, daughter. But she also resents her aunt, even though she sees so much of herself in her aunt in terms of her independence, her, her pride, her strength they still feel abandoned by her decision to turn into a dragon itself. Like, even though you can understand how they could no longer take any more, it's still, they still have to overcome this feeling of being left behind, especially because who they're being left behind with are often incompetent and not proper caretakers anyway. So it's just a very dynamic story. And I really appreciate how it feels so much just like Alex's life, but, there's still all these like larger conversations happening. And I also appreciate that we're kind of learning about this scientific reality through Alex's point of view and through like different lenses of different places in her childhood and her own psyche. I think like learning as she does makes everything just more interesting in that way. And like us being able to see and absorb it through also having the understanding of her emotions and her reality too. Um, I'm gonna sit down and actually finish this book now. I'm curious to see how it's going to end. Um, and I'm curious to see where the rest of Alex's life is going to take us. And uh, the writing style truly is very, very beautiful. And I had, I had expectations it would be so given 
um, the other books I've written, read by Kelly Barnhill. Not only, I definitely have not written them, if only. Anywho, I'm going to finish this book now, but I just wanted to give you an update for my thoughts. Um, I also feel like there's some really beautiful imagery, specifically around knots and mathematics too. I feel like that's a really common theme and thread throughout this book that I really appreciate is like constantly called back to. Um, but anyway, gonna read this, gonna finish this, and then I'm gonna start my second book this evening. Also, here's a quick OOTD. I'm wearing my purple pants. Yes. Quick coffee break. I'm also gonna heat up one of my banana muffins, which have been the best little treat to have all week. Yum. Um, I just completed When Women Were Dragons, which was on plan, on schedule, and this book is 336 pages, and overall I really like this book. I appreciated the emotional and personal journey that we went on with Alex. I liked that the story was framed and told from her point of view. A lot of interspersed like science and exploration and explanation as to how this dragoning works and also throughout the book as time passes there's more clarity as more research is done and because becoming a dragon is so taboo it took a significant amount of time because people's experiences were not being written down and you kind of see that macro societal journey at like a micro level with Alex's life herself as she's reckoning not only with her feelings towards her aunt, her mother, and just like shouldering all these different responsibilities. But ultimately, things I really appreciated about this is like dragoning is like feminine, but it's not rooted in biology. It's not rooted in motherhood. It has like so many different forms of expression and ultimately it's about choice, like to become a dragon, to not become a dragon. It's really an expression of wanting to take up whatever amount of space that you want to take. And I think the ending itself particularly is pretty interesting. Um, I don't necessarily want to mention it because spoilers, but I think this like evolution society is expressed interestingly and because this is an alternate history, right? You have literal dragons like living on earth now, like that evolution of how society is changing around this fact I thought was explored in this book, which I thought was interesting. Overall, I don't know, I felt pretty connected to the story. I loved Alex as the main character. The writing is really, really stunning. And I think as a concept, it was really clever. And I thought acted as a good vehicle to kind of talk about a variety of different topics. Again, um, I wouldn't say the book itself was perfect. It was a little slower at times, but in general, I found the whole story to be very emotional, very frustrating. Like I wish there was more moments of beauty, I guess, interspersed, but a lot of Alex's life was a difficult and harrowing journey, but we did get to see some beautiful moments at the end, not just with her life, her dream and her passions, but also like love and the different relationships that she's in. As many of the characters in this book are queer. So this book, is talking about not just femininity but like queer identity and choice and like how all those things can also be wrapped so tightly together i don't know i found this book to be really moving i really enjoyed it honestly and it's definitely a book that made me think and i also appreciated a lot of the dynamic relationships like not everyone is good not everyone is bad people make decisions for themselves and for their own happiness which can ultimately hurt someone or leave someone behind but hopefully but hopefully we can create a world where everyone can make decisions for themselves without having to leave people behind, if that makes sense, for them to live the life they wanna live. I liked it quite a bit. And now Millie and I are gonna hang out. Clay and I are actually going to the movies tonight. We're seeing the new Thor movie. 
So uh, I think we're just gonna vibe for a while before we have to leave. Isn't that right, Matilda? But I'm pretty jazzed. I've read 346 pages so far and I'm gonna start my second book tonight. Before heading to the movies, we started a new drama, which is The Alchemy of Souls. I've just seen it everywhere on social media. It's a pretty like outrageous fantasy K-drama, but it's also pretty self-aware. Review post episode one. I like it. The first 20 minutes were a little difficult to get through. It just came off really hokey and corny, but after that, like they started getting more into like the character for development, which is why I really like K-dramas and I can tell it's gonna be fun most Yeah, likely. it seems pretty funny. I actually think the, I actually think the stylization is really pretty. Like the coloring and stuff. I, I do and think I think once you kind of get nice. used to like the over the top nature of the combat, I don't know, it's kind of like a fun ride. Anyway, it's been a minute since I've watched a fantasy K-drama, so I'm excited to catch up and see what all the hype is about. But now we have to go to the movies. Which I'm so excited because I'm going to get chicken fingers. We're at the movies. We are seeing Thor at Alamo. Good morning, friends. Starting book two of this vlog. And of course, we have a cup of coffee. So going to get to it. I'm so excited to pick this book up. I loved Daughter of the Forest. So I have very high expectations going in to this book. My little creature is all comfy this morning. Also very much a desk day, but I'm trying to be productive so I can get back to my book. I also have an update for you guys because I have read the first like 60 pages and I have feelings, I have thoughts. So actually let's sit down and chat about them now. Hi, it's me. Let's talk about Sun of Shadows by Juliet Merlier, book two of this vlog and book two to the Seven Waters series. So here's the deal. I am both like terrified to read this book, but also I have such high expectations. I read Daughter of the Forest two months ago and loved it from the writing style to the characters, the setting. It felt like cottage core fantasy. It was emotional, just everything about it. Um, so far, I can say I am liking this book quite a bit. And we open back up in the Seven Waters itself, a very familiar place where we started the first book, but instead we are in the future. And our main characters from book one have grown up, they've had children, and now their children are kind of embarking into like their life, their adulthood, all of those things. And our main character in this book is Lydon. I hope I'm saying her name right. And she is quiet, respectful, she's very dutiful, she also is into healing just like Sorsha um, and in a lot of ways she's very quiet and it doesn't have like huge expectations for like plans of her own life. She assumes that she's going to follow a very expected path and she's okay with that. At the beginning of the story there is some strife between her and her older sister who's much more rambunctious, much more loud, takes up a lot more space and they often compare themselves to each other quite a bit. Um, in that Lyadin feels that she is much less attractive, much less interesting, much less worthwhile than her sister. Um, and they kind of come to heads, but you can also see that they love and care about each other quite a bit. I'm curious to see where this book is going to take off. A lot of these stories have to do a lot with prophecy and this like tapestry of fate and our characters kind of going down an unlikely path and having to like face a very complicated and difficult adventure. The first one also had quite a bit of romance and often spoke about this complicated nature of like different groups of people who have had conflict for a long time, but still trying to reach this place of peace, even though you have both hurt each other quite a bit. I imagine that will continue to persist within this book. Also, Juliette Merlier often talks about like the women's role in a fantasy setting, which I think is interesting and like shows different types of female strength, which I appreciate. Um, so far I am liking this. The style of it, the writing style is consistent from the first one. I love the setting and just like this very classic fantasy vibe. And I love a quest, what can I say? I'm curious to see where it's going to take us there's like hints of something ominous like oh Leiden's fate seems murky like we don't know what's going to happen with her and neither do we as a reader um but i'm hoping this is going to grip me pull me in the first 60 pages so far have been very engaging and i'm just excited to be back in this world i just love the vibes oh so much so i've read 60 pages so far so good i will keep you guys posted i plan to read more today after lunch but I need to make lunch literally as we speak. I'm so hungry, but I wanted to film this update first. Um, 
and that's it. So yay, book two, 60 pages. I've read just about 400 pages, which I'm pretty jazzed with, and I want to get to the 150 page mark before I end filming today. I love an adult Lunchable because they're so colorful. I have some seasonal peaches, some fresh bell peppers, carrots, cheese. I mean, really the only new thing is the peaches, so yum. It is time for a reading session. Hi friends and welcome to the end of the vlog. A little later in the day, I'm happy to report I have hit my page goal for Son of the Shadows. And this book is really interesting. I'm happy to say Juliet Marillier's trend of having like, honestly, a pretty harrowing tale continues. These books are not light reads, but they are rather dynamic. We're watching our heroines have to take on a lot and push back against society a lot. And that is continuing to be a trend in this next book. The trials are a little bit different. The locations are a little bit different. Um, but ultimately there is this consistency from book to book. Um, and just the strength and the perseverance of the female characters you run into in Juliet Marley's writing, I just really enjoy. How like destiny and fate is so much centered in these books, but also like watching characters like trying to push against that, I find to be just a setup and story I personally really enjoy. I like our main character Lydon quite a bit. I also appreciate that there is a sisterly relationship within this book, as complicated as it may be, but in the last book it was really one sister, a bunch of brothers, and I think having a sisterly connection as well as having a mother present in this story adds like a different dynamic that Juliet Marley is able to explore. Um, yes. I am liking this. I really want to finish it. It has gripped me quite immediately and I did fly through the first 150 pages of this book. And then obviously I also read the entirety of When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill, a really good speculative fiction story that will make you furious while you're reading it. But it was an emotional and intimate tale that also had a rather large scope, um, which in general I appreciated. I also loved that the idea of femininity and the idea of feminine rage really evolved as well and was really inclusive to a lot of different angles, which was talked about and explored in the story. Really liked this story. It was very poignant, very timely, if I'm being honest. Um, and as much as this book made me want to scream, I also couldn't put it down. So both these books honestly like center like females and women in a fantasy kind of setting. I would recommend both of them quite a bit. And yeah, I would say overall a very successful vlog. Both these books are so good. Um, and thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, big shout out again to this video sponsor, which is Norex. And if you guys want to learn more about them, I will of course have that link down below. But thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye.